Welcome to the pathway for today. Uh, I am so thankful for Ryan Ventura teaching this weekend because he bit off two entire chapters of 2 Kings uh, to help us keep moving forward. But the way that they hang together, as he showed us, is that this is kind of that critical moment in the history of Judah and Israel when the northern kingdom of Israel is finally taken into captivity. And most of chapter 17 was God explaining exactly why that was happening. And what I thought was just really interesting that hit me as I walked out of the service this morning, somebody mentioned to me how when you see how bad it had gotten and when you realize it had been that way for hundreds of years, it actually made this person realize just how gracious and patient God is. And that, that struck me because as Ryan was sharing it, one of the big things that's happening is God is making his case against Israel and Judah. We keep seeing these evil kings and he's showing them why the judgment is going to need to happen. Why that's the only thing left is to go into captivity. And you can almost miss, like you could almost read that then and say, oh wow, look at all this judgment and, and God is full of wrath and they made God angry. And you realize God has been patient, loving the whole time. And as Ryan showed us, he's still going to keep his promises to send the Savior, Jesus. And so I wanted us just for a moment to look at Dig Deeper number one because it kind of hits into that idea of how God is making his case. You know, the idea that God doesn't fly off the handle. Like before he does something, he actually announces why it's going to happen. And if you go back hundreds of years, he actually told them, <laughs> if you do this, this is what will happen. Right? That it's not like it's a surprise to them and, and that there's some capricious God that they don't know how to deal with. And so the part of that question just says, what does God do in chapter 17, verse 13? And so I pulled up that verse and this is what it says. Yet the Lord testified against Israel and against Judah by all of his prophets, every seer, saying, turn from your evil ways. So even now, in the chapter that's describing why they were carried away, the word God sends them is actually not just, that's it, too late, you had your chance. It's, do you realize what you've done? Turn. He's still calling them back to himself. And it reminded me of Isaiah 55, 7. Because as Ryan showed us, Isaiah is alive at this time serving these kings. And one of the things that he wrote straight from the mouth of God let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord and he will have mercy on him. And to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. Even at their worst, God was still offering them a way back. That is the God of grace and the God of patience that we love and that we serve. And so when I find moments and you find moments that I've veered off course, I know there is a God who loves me, who's just calling out, leave that thing behind, turn back to me. Let's talk to him right now. Father, you know how much Isaiah 55, 7 has meant to me in my own life, and I love seeing how even in these dark moments, you have not given up on your character, you have not given up on your promises, that you are still proclaiming the possibility of grace. Lord, I ask on behalf of myself and anyone who is watching this, when we hit those dark moments in our own lives where we've strayed away from you, by your grace and by your spirit, would you keep calling us back, Lord, that we might follow you, see your patience, see your mercy, and find uh, how to be faithful to you who are so faithful to us. And we ask that in Jesus' name. Amen.